All right, so the first part of um, the dialogue of the Savior is going to be my face reading the um, screen because I'm not going to go back and redo it. But um, I read pretty slowly. So it's completely easy to read. The other half is just is actually going to be us reading it together. Um, and that way we can all uh, see the words and read it together because I believe that's what's important and not my face. But um, it needed to be the way that it is. Um, also, I might slide a reference tool in there, um, something that I just um, did. Yeah. Um, eventually, you'll be able to read along if you'd like to. The Dialogue of the Savior, translated by Marvin Meyer. The Dialogue of the Savior, the fifth tractate of the Nag Hammadi Codex, three, is the only extant version of this title, which was originally composed to Greek. A number of lines on pages 127, 32, 137 through 38, and 145 through 47 are poorly preserved. Although the work of Stefan Immel has allowed for a more substantial set of readings on pages 145 through 46, the title appears at both the beginning and the end of the tractate. The Coptic manuscript includes several corrections made by the scribe who added letters above the lines of text. In its present form, the Dialogue of the Savior is a compilation of different sources that are intertwined and that thus contribute to the complexity of the document. Even if the tractate as a whole is called a dialogue, the first part of the text does not belong to this literary, literary gene. Literary gene. The first section is a monologue the Savior delivers to his disciples, probably before leaving the world. The apparent timing of this monologue is of some interest since many revelations of the Savior in Gnostic scriptures are said to have taken place after his resurrection. The insertion of a prayer, which belongs to a later revision, revision of the portion of the dialogue of the Savior, divides the monologue in two parts. In the first part, the Savior instructs his disciples about the theme of rest and the time of salvation. The Savior tells them, now the time has come, brothers and sisters, for us to leave our labor behind and stand at rest. He adds, for whoever stands at rest will rest forever. For whosoever stands at rest will rest forever. These words imply that salvation has already come and a form of eschatology, eschatology has been realized. In the present life, a point of view common to several Gnostic currents of thought. The Savior also notes that he too has already come and opened the path for those who are chosen and alone. Conversely, the second part of the monologue refers to salvation yet to come at a future time. And the soul must still go through the Archon's dreadful places 
after dissolution so as to attain the realm of truth. We find here the well-known Gnostic theme of the Archons, guardians of the spheres, trying to detain the soul in its ascent. The attitude the Savior recommends to the souls is that they neither fear the cosmic powers nor hesitate as they pass by. The prayer inserted between these two parts of the Savior's discourse is in Intensin Intention with the monologue in that it indicates that the Son has already turned to the Father and the Chosen have already been liberated from their bodies. It is terminology also its terminology also shows that this dialogue of the text was added by a redicator. The actual dialogue of the dialogue of the Savior begins at 124.23. The Savior addresses his disciples, but only three of them are individually named. Matthew, Judas probably to be identified with Judas Thomas, the twin of the Lord, whose popularity was great in some Gnostic circles, especially in Syria. Although Judas Iscariot is also a possibility. And Mary, Mary Magdalene, the last, the two last disciples being among the most praised in Gnostic literature. Sometimes Matthew, Judas, or Mary raises questions at other times the disciples as a whole do so. The questions and answers are generally short, especially at the beginning of the dialogue, but some answers are more fully developed by minions of the insertion of additional materials. A fragment of a cosmonic Myth. A several sephrential cosmological list accounts of various actions and a description of an apocalyptic vision. The dialogue of the Savior is the only Nag Hammadi treatise to refer to the gene of dialogue in its title. Even if this description does not apply to the entire text. Nevertheless, other dialogues are present in the Nag Hammadi Library as well as in other Gnostic literature. They are typically revelatory dialogues in which the Savior communicates secret teachings to certain disciples through questions and answers. Among them are the Secret Book of John, Secret Secret Book of James, the Gospel of Thomas, the Book of Thomas, and among Gnostic texts. Beyond the Nag Hammadi Library, Pista Sophia, a difference can be noted, noticed. However, between these works and the Dialogue of the Savior, in the Dialogue of the Savior, no reference is made to either the time when the Dialogue occurred, <coughs> whether before or after the Savior's resurrection, or where it took place. Several traditional sayings of Jesus are included in the dialogue of the Savior. And some of them recall sayings in the Gospel of Thomas and the Gospel of John. One of the most noteworthy is a saying in the dialogue of the Savior about seeking and finding, which brings to mind saying of the Gospel of Thomas. Another saying in the present text recalls the saying of the same gospel. Several sources have contributed to the dialogue of the Savior in its current form in the Nag Hammadi Library. These sources do not belong to the same period of time, but to various generations of Christianity. The most ancient source of dialogue itself 
which may have been written before the end of the first century, as it is suggested by the simple theological interpretation of some sayings in comparison with the exgenesis of the Gospel of John. Eventually, the tractate was revised by its final eradicator, and it is in this form that we now know it. The original Greek text, which was later translated into Coptic, could have been composed during the second century, according to Helmut Koster and Elaine H. Pegels, or between 250 and 275, according to Perry Letourinot. Letourinot. It is the dialogue of the Savior and Gnostic text. The question remains open because on one hand the treatise is characterized by typical Gnostic themes, but on the other hand it offers points of view that are shared with Orthodox theology and doctrine. A balanced perspective of the tractate is given by Perry who concludes that the dialogue of the Savior belongs to a world of thought between what is Gnostic and what is Orthodox. Some typical Gnostic ideas are lacking in the idea, are lacking in the dialogue of the Savior its author does not share. For instance, a pessimistic Gnostic option about the world based on the presence of a second inferior deity on the contrary, the world is presented as the creation of the Father through the Word or Logos. It is maintained that in creation the Father gathered together the waters and the world came forth and was told to fertilize the earth. A Stoic interpretation of Genesis, which may be compared to Point Mandarin's. Nevertheless, the world shows features of deficiency. It also may be observed that the myth of Sophia, a common feature of the Gnostic history of creation, does not appear in the tractate. Some themes with Gnostic overtones do appear in the dialogue of the Savior. One such theme is that <clears throat> of the bridal chamber, which is intertwined with another Gnostic motif known from Valentinian traditions, namely the garments of life offered to the children of truth, who in turn are contrasted with the children of oblivion and related Gnostic themes is the connection between the chosen or elect on earth and their partners in heaven. It is not their destiny to perish, but to recover their original androgynous oneness. To this set of Gnostic concepts, we may add the themes of the Archons placing obstacles in the way of the elect. Another interesting point in the dialogue of the Savior is the focus on the figure of Mary Magdalene, who is depicted by the Savior as a woman who understood everything. Although this opinion is typical of Gnostic interpretation about the beloved disciple of Christ, the author does not make Mary Magdalene a symbol of secret knowledge, and in the tractate she does not come into conflict with the other disciples. Rather, she, along with the other disciples, learns to understand the teachings of this learns to understand the teachings of the Savior by entering into dialogue with him. The Dialogue of the Savior The Savior teaches about rest. The Savior said to his disciples, Now the time has come, brothers and sisters, for us to leave our labor behind <clears throat> and stand at rest. For whoever stands at rest will rest forever. For I say to you, always rise above time. I say to you, do not be afraid of those, you. I say to you, anger is frightening, and whoever stirs up anger is a frightening person. But since 
you have been able to endure, it may come from you. People receive these words about anger with fear and trembling. Anger established ruler, rulers over them, for no one escapes anger. But when I came, I opened a path and taught people about the way of passage. For those who are chosen and cho for those who are chosen and alone, who have known the Father and have believed the truth, and you offer praise. Giving praise to the Father. Now, when you offer praise, do so in this way. Hear us, Father, as you have heard your only Son, and have received him to yourself. You have given him rest from many labors. Your power is invincible, because your armaments are invincible. Light, alive, inaccessible, alive. The true word has brought repentance for life, and this has come from you. You are the thought and supreme serenity of those who are alone. Again, hear us as you have heard your chosen. Through your sacrifice, the chosen will enter. Through their good works, they have freed their souls from blind bodily limbs so that they may come to be forever. Amen. Overcoming the Power of Darkness I shall teach you at the time of destruction the first power of darkness will come upon you. Do not be afraid and say, look, the time has come. But when you see a single staff, understand that from some such thing and the rulers come upon you. In truth, fear is the power of darkness. So if you are afraid of what is about to come upon you, it will overwhelm you, and not one among them will spare you or show you mercy. Look, rather look at what is within, since you have mastered every word on earth. This will take you up to a place where there is no dominion and no tyrant. When you, you will see those and you will also hear them. I tell you, reflection, reflection is where truth is, but they and you, truth, this is in living mind therefore and your joy in order that your souls least the word which they raised and they could not understand it make what is inside you and what is outside you a single one to be sure, the place of crossing is frightening in your sight, but without hesitation pass by. Its depth is great, its height is staggering. Be of a single mind, and the fire dewdrops all powers you. They will, and all powers they in front, I tell you. The soul becomes in each one. You are and that sleep not. The children and you 
view. The, sa the Savior and his disciples discuss the inner life. Matthew said, How? The Savior said, If you do not keep what is within you in order, your work will remain, but you will not. Judas said, Master, I want to understand all the works of the soul's that are in these little ones. When, where will they be? The spirit, the master said, receive them. They do not die and are not destroyed because they have known their companions and the one who will receive them. For truth seeks the wise and the righteous. The Savior said, The lamp of the body is the mind. As long as what is within you is kept in order, <coughs> that is the soul, your bodies are enlightened. As long as your hearts are dark, your light, which you expect, is far from you. I have called you to myself since I am about to depart so that you may receive my words among yourselves. Look, I am sending it to you. Who seeks? Who reveals? His disciples said, Master, who seeks and who reveals? The master said to them, The one who seeks also reveals. Matthew said to him again, Master, when I listen to you and I speak, who is it who speaks and who listens? The master said, One who speaks also listens, and one who can see also reveals. Mary said, Master, look, while I wear a body, where do my tears come from? Where does my laughter come from? And the master said, The body weeps because of its works and what remains to be done. The mind laughs because of the fruits of the spirit. Whoever does not stand in darkness will not be able to see the light. I tell you, what has no light is darkness, and whoever does not stand in darkness will not be able to see the light. The children of falsehood, however, were taken out. You will put on light, and so you will live forever. If, then, all the powers above and below will treat you harshly. In that place there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth over the end of all. The Creation of the World Judas said, Tell us, Master, what existed before heaven and earth came into being? The master said, There was darkness and water and spirit upon the water. And I tell you the truth, look what you seek and inquire about is within you, and it has the power and mystery of the spirit, for it is from the spirit. The wickedness entered in order to destroy the mind forever. Look. Matthew said, Master, tell us, where is the soul established, and where does the true mind dwell? The Master said, The fire of the Spirit came into existence between the two, <clears throat> and so there came to be Spirit, and the true mind within them, 
If someone establishes the soul on high, then the person will be exalted. Seek, find, and rejoice. Matthew asked him, isn't necessary when it is understood in the true sense. The master said, is more useful than your work. Remove from yourselves what can pursue you and everything in your hearts. For as your hearts, so will you find a way to overcome the powers above and below. <coughs> and I say to you, let one who has power renounce it and repent. Let one who knows seek and find and rejoice. Judas said, look, I see that all things are just like signs over the earth, and that is why they have come to be in this way. Emergence of the Word The Master said, When the Father established the world, he collected some of its water, and the word came from it. It experienced many troubles, but it was more exalted than the path of the stars around the entire earth. He continued, The water collected above is beyond the stars, and beyond the water is a great fire encircling them, like a wall. Periods of time began to be measured once many of the beings that were within had separated from the rest. When the word was established, he looked down. The father said to him, Go, send something from yourself so that the earth may not be in want from generation to generation and from age to age. So he sent from himself fountains of milk, fountains of honey, oil, wine, and fine fruit and delicious flavors and sound roots, so that the earth might not be deficient from generation to generation and from age to age. The word is above, stood and showed his beauty, and outside was a great light, brighter than the one like it, for that one rules over all the, remain, the realms above and below. Light was taken from the fire and dispersed in the firmament above and below. Those over the heaven above and the earth below depend upon them. Everything is dependent upon them. When Judas heard this, he bowed down, fell on his knees, and praised his master. The Savior and his disciples discuss the place of life. Mary asked her brothers, Where are you going to store these questions as you ask the Son of Humanity? The Master said to her, Sister, no one can ask about these things except someone who has a place to store them in the heart. And such a person can leave the world and enter the place of life and will not be held back in this world of 
poverty. Matthew said, Master, I want to see that place of life where there is no wickedness but only pure light. The master replied, Brother Matthew, Matthew, you will not be able to see it as long as you wear flesh. Matthew said, Master, if I cannot see it, at least let me understand it. The master said, Everyone who has known oneself has seen oneself. Everything that person is given to do, that person does. So such a person has come to resemble that place in goodness. How does an earthquake shake? Judas answered and said, Tell me, Master, how does an earthquake shake when it shakes the earth? The master picked up a stone and held it in his hand. He said to him, What I am holding in my hand, he answered, It is a stone. He said to them, What supports the earth is also what supports heaven. When a word comes from the majesty, it will go to what supports heaven and earth. The earth does not move. If it moved, it would collapse, but it does not. So that the first word might not fail. The word established the world and dwelled in it and smelled the fragrance of it. I make known to you, all you children of humanity, all the things that do not move. For you are from that place. You live in the hearts of those who speak out in joy and truth. If the word comes from the Father's body among people and they do not receive it, it will return back to his place. So what he does is he he's in the majesty. He is the word, which is number one here. And he entered through the word through heaven, through earth, which are all immovable, which is what he explained here <clears throat> to Judas. He moved into movement and senses, which is number two, so that we can interpret um, what he is, so that we can fix our mind on the objective point in which he um, is ex explaining that he is because he is the rest and stability of all things and then he dies which is number three and returned back to stability and rest And then he comes and goes as he pleases to come back to the disciples and teach them um, about his rest and stability. And this is how um, people receive revelation from faith, you know. Um, and believing that he is the ultimate God. Because he said he is which was, which is, and which will be. And in order for that to be true, because he said he is which is. And if he is which is, then he most definitely did overcome movement. Because if he is which is, and which will be, and which was, and which is, is explaining that he has all of this. So yes, he, 
he did die. That's him explaining that, yes, he did come complete the, um, the part in which he had to come here and die and return and then come so that he can say he is which is in which was in which will be. It's awesome stuff. Um, this is just a reference tool. Um, uh, from the dialogue of the Savior, the Nag Hammadi um, scriptures. And um, this was a Judas asking, how does an earthquake shake? So I had to, I had to go in here and do all this because um, I was really confused about how we are in the movement sense because everything here, even though that it's a solid, is um, at a vibratory frequency, which means that it's moving. And he goes on to explain that um, the word heaven and the earth do not move. So obviously we're in movement and in senses. Because then he goes on to explain about how he came in and he smelt and smelling is it, it sets off its vibratory frequency that's what it is but he overcame all of that just to go on about how in the acts of peter jesus or peter says touch uh, touch not taste not etc 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 um it, it makes so much sense um, it really does now, now that I went over this reference. But apparently I was recording my face while I was reading aloud the dialogue of the Savior. So I'm glad I caught that while I was doing this. So we're going to get back into that and we're going to be able to actually read it, the rest of it. Cool, cool beans. I'm going to upload this right now and um, just set it as a reference tool for myself so that, and anybody else who wants to look at it. Coming to understanding. Whoever does not know the work of perfection does not know anything. One who does not stand in the darkness cannot see the light. One who does not understand how fire came to be will burn in it, not knowing its origin. One who does not first understand water knows nothing. For what use is there for such a person to be baptized in it? One who does not understand how the wind that blows came to be will blow away with it. One who does not understand how the body that a person wears came to be will perish with it. How will someone who does not know the Son know the Father? All things are hidden from one who does not know the root of all things. Whoever does not know the root of wickedness is no stranger to it. Those who do not understand how they came will not understand how they will go. <clears throat> and they are no strangers to this world, which will exalt itself and be humbled. Judas, Matthew, and Mary have an apocalyptic vision. He took Judas, Matthew, and Mary to show them the final consummation of heaven and earth, and when he placed his hand on them, they hoped they might see it. Judas gazed up and saw a region of great height, and he saw the region of the abyss below. Judas said to Matthew, Brother, who can ascend to such a height or descend to the abyss below? 
for there is a great fire there and great terror. At that moment, a word issued from the heights as Judas was standing there. He saw how the word came down. He asked the word, Why have you come down? The Son of Humanity greeted them and said to them, A seed from a power was deficient, and it descended to the earth's abyss. The Majesty remembered it and sent the word to it. The word brought the seed up into the presence of the Majesty, so that the first word might not be lost. His disciples marveled at everything he told them, and they accepted all of it in faith. And they understood that it was no longer necessary to keep an eye on evil. Then he said to his disciples, Didn't I tell you that, like a visible flash of thunder and lightning, what is good will be taken up to the height, to the light? All his disciples praised him and said, Master, before you appear here, who was there to praise you, for all praises are because of you? Or who was there to bless you, for all blessing comes from you? As they were standing there, he saw two spirits, bringing a single soul with them. And there was a great flash of lightning. A word came from the Son of Humanity, saying, Give them their garments, and the small became like the great, and they were like those who were received up. There was no distinction among them. The words he spoke convinced the disciples. Mary asks about the vision. Mary said to him, Look, I see the evil that affects people from the start when they dwell with each other. The master said to her, when you see them, you understand a great deal. They will not stay there, but when you see the one who exists eternally, that is the great vision. They all said to him, explain to us. And he said to them, how do you wish to see it? In a passing vision or in an eternal vision? He went on to say, Do your best to save what can come after me, and seek it, and speak through it, so that whatever you seek may be in harmony with you. For I say to you, truly, the living God is in you, as you also are in God. Judas asks about the rulers of the world and the garments. Judas said, I really want to learn everything. The master said to him, the living God does not dwell in this entire region of deficiency. Judas asked, who will rule over us? The master replied, look here. All the things that exist among what remains, you rule over them. Judas said, but look, the rulers are over us, so they will rule over us. The master answered, you will rule over them when you remove jealousy from yourselves. You will clothe yourselves in light and enter the bridal chamber. Judas asked, How will our garments be brought to us? The master answered, There are some who will provide them for you and others who will receive them, and they will give you your garments. For who can reach that place? It is very frightening. But the garments of life were given to these people because they know the way they will go. Indeed, it is difficult for me to reach it.
Mary utters words of wisdom. Mary said, so, the wickedness of each day is sufficient. Workers deserve their food. Disciples resemble their teachers. She spoke this utterance as a woman who understood everything. The disciples ask about fullness and deficiency, life and death. The disciples asked him, what is fullness and what is deficiency? He answered them, you are from fullness and you are in a place of deficiency. And look, his light has poured down upon me. Matthew asked, tell me, master, how the dead die and how the living live. The master said, you have asked me about a true saying that I has not seen, nor have I heard it, except from you. But I say to you, when what moves a person slips away, that person will be called dead. And when what is living leaves what is dead, it will be called alive. Judas asks, so why really do some die and some live? The master said, whatever is from truth does not die. Whatever, whatever is from woman dies. Barry asked, Tell me, Master, why have I come to this place to gain? Why have I come to this place to gain or to lose? The Master replied, You show the abundance of the one who reveals. Mary asked him, Master, then is there a place that is abandoned or without truth? The Master said, the place where I am not. Mary said, Master, you who are awesome and marvelous and like a devouring fire to those who do not know you. <clears throat> Matthew asked, Why don't we go to our rest at once? The Master said, When you leave these burdens behind, Matthew asked, how does the small unite with the great? The master said, when you leave behind what cannot accompany you, then you will rest. Mary and the other disciples discussed true life with the master. Mary said, I want to understand all things just as they are. The master said, whoever seeks life, this is their wealth. For the world's rest is false. And its gold and silver are deceptive. His disciple asked him, what should we do for our work to be perfect? The master said to him, be ready in every circumstance. Blessed are they who have found the strife and have seen the struggle with their eyes. They have not killed, nor have they been killed, but they have emerged victorious. Judas asked, Tell me, Master, what is the beginning of the way? He said, Love and goodness. If one of these had existed among the rulers, wickedness would never have come to be. Matthew said, Master, have you spoken of the end of the universe with no difficulty? 
The master said, You have understood all things I said to you, and you have accepted them in faith. If you know them, they are yours. If not, they are not yours. They asked him, To what place are we going? The master said, Stand in the place you can reach. Mary asked, Is everything established in this, visible, in this way visible? The master said, I have told you, the one who can see reveals. His twelve disciples asked him, Teacher, with serenity, teach us. The master said, If you have understood everything I have told you, you will become immortal. For you, everything. Mary said, there is only one saying I shall speak to the master about the mystery of truth. In this we stand, and in this we appear to those who are worldly. <clears throat> Judas said to Matthew, We want to understand what sort of garments we are to be clothed with when we leave the corruption of the flesh. The master said, The rulers and the administrators have garments that are given only for a while and do not last. But you, as children of truth, are not clothed, are not to clothe yourselves with these garments that last only for a while. Rather, I say to you, you will be blessed when you strip off their clothing. For it is no great thing to lay aside what is eternal. Said, Do I speak and do I receive? The master said, Yes, one who receives your father in a reflective way. <clears throat> Mary questions the master about the mustard seed. Mary asks, what kind, of what kind is the mustard seed? It is from heaven or from earth. The master said, when the father established the world for himself, he left many things with the mother of all. That is why he sows and works. Judas said, you have told us this from the mind of truth when we pray how should we pray the master said pray in the place where there is no woman matthew says tell us pray in the place where there is no woman which means destroy the works of the female not because there is another from birth but because they should stop giving birth. Mary said, Will they never be destroyed? The master said, You know they will perish once again, and the works of the female here will be destroyed as well. Judas said to Matthew, The works of the female will perish. Then the rulers will call upon their realms, and we shall be ready for them. The master said, Will they see you, and will they see those who receive you? Look, a true word is coming from the Father to the abyss silently, with a flash of lightning. It is productive. Do they see it, or do they overcome it? Do they see it, or overcome it? No, you know more fully the way that neither angel nor authority knows. It is the way of the Father and the Son, for the two are one. And you will travel the way you have come to know. Even if the rulers become great, they will not be able to reach it. I tell you the truth, it is even difficult for me to reach it.
Mary asked the master, If the works are destroyed, what actually destroys a work? The master said, You know that when I destroy it, people will go to their own places. Judas said, How is the spirit disclosed? The master said, How is the sword disclosed? Judas said, How is the light disclosed? The master said, It is disclosed through itself eternally. Judas asked, Who forgives whose works? Do the works forgive the world, or does the world forgive the works? The master answered, Who knows? For it is the responsibility of whoever has come to know the works to do the will of the Father. As for you, work hard to rid yourselves of anger and jealousy, and strip yourselves of your works, and do not reproach, for I say to you, receive many, one who has sought, having found true light, this person will attain rest and live forever. I say to you, watch yourselves, so that you may not lead your spirits and your souls into error.